guys and welcome to vlog number 12. As y'all saw, I've already done a lot today. I've had a really good day. So first I went to the animal shelter to donate some cat food and treats and I got the pet cats. Um, I didn't see any dogs because um, they're like in a different area than where I went. So it was, it was very quick. So, yeah, the lady showed me this cat. He has like a curled up tail, like a chow or like Pomeranian. And she had never seen a cat like that. I had never seen a cat like that. And just all oh, the cats are so cute. And she said he's getting a home that he has an adoption pending. So it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah. And like I showed her pictures of my pets and she showed me a picture of the dog that she's getting. And very nice. The people, everybody who works there are super, super nice. And they're yeah love them <laughs> that's my first time ever going to that shelter um i followed their social medias and all of that but i haven't been in person so i'm glad that i finally did get to do that so then i went to kelly town which is literally named after my ancestors which um so jacob kelly built the house that i showed he's my fifth great grandfather back in like the 1800s or whenever you all saw the sign. And um, he lived at that house and obviously so my fourth great grandfather was born there and all of that. So that was super interesting to see where my family lived and to walk in the same spot that so they walked in. And if y'all saw the oak tree, so I, I am reading the over story by Richard Powers right now. And there's um, one story in it that is about this a um, man builds a chestnut tree in Iowa, which is really like not where chestnut trees are, are they're usually on the East Coast. So he builds that, or no, doesn't build, he plants that. And like each generation has, has been taking pictures of that tree. And so just to think of all those generations walked under that same tree. So to me, it was like this oak tree, to just to think of all the stories, I guess how, as y'all saw in the Civil War, the Union held the house as their like, base I guess and um so the war has sort of gone by and just life in general just to think of everything that happened and the trees just have seen it all and that's amazing so then I went downtown and I found out there's an independent bookstore so this is only about I don't know let's say 30 minutes from my house and um it's somewhere I go quite frequently the town just never never noticed it and because I was looking at pictures of old bookstores because I was the aesthetic you know and to use those backgrounds on like my phone and whatever and it showed us a list of bookstores in my area and I was like wait what's that one so there is a college in that town so I was like is it just a college bookstore but no it's actually an independently owned bookstore so I'm gonna show you all what I got actually my dad has some stuff in here too but I'll show that as well so I'm still buying historical fiction in March so this one is actually kind of like a historical romance and it is the house of Lanyon and this is by Valerie Anand so when two ambitious families occupy the same patch of English soil rivalry is sure to take root and flourish a glimmer of initiative swells into blind desire and minor hurts nursed to a jealousy fester into a malignant hatred when a bitter feud is born the price for this wild and beautiful piece of ground will take more than three generations to settle right at my alley then i got this one roma by stephen sailor a novel of ancient rome so from its mythic beginnings as a campsite along a trade route to its emergence as the center of an extensive powerful empire Stephen Saylor's breathtaking novel brings to vivid life the most famous city in the ancient world. Told through the tragedies and triumphs of the descendants of two families, Roma shows the events, the people, the turning points in history that have come to symbolize ancient Rome in the modern imagination. That sounds great. So then I did get two nonfiction as well because I'm like, oh my gosh, she's sun right at my alley. So we have Hidden America, so from coal miners to cowboys, an extraordinary exploration of the unseen people who make the country work by Janine Marie Laskus. That is just something, like, I talk about the channel South by Underbelly a lot, and this just reminds me of that. So just telling people stories of lesser known people, not famous people, who our country would not like survive without these kinds of people. So I thought that sounded super interesting. And then this one, I am wanting to 
read a book about every president and every first lady. Haven't got to that yet, but this is The Founding Mothers, The Woman Who Raised Our Nation by Koki Roberts. So I thought that sounded cool. Then this one is a picture book. Again, this is telling people's stories just maybe by the looks of them. And then we have some like location pictures. So this is The South in Color, a visual journal by William Ferris. So, ooh, new stock. So yeah, this is a brand new book. This um, isn't used like the others. And then this is the one my dad got. That is from a local author. And that is Shrimp Tales, Small Bites of History by Beverly Bowers Jenning. So all about shrimp. So then I went to an antique store. I didn't buy anything, but I'm definitely gonna have to go back there because there was a lot of cool stuff. They had records, books. I didn't look through all the books since I already got all these books, but um, magazines, we know I love vintage magazines. And then obviously clothes and um, knickknacks, furniture, that kind of thing. They had a lot. So yes, I've done a lot to start out this vlog and I still have a lot to do today, but I'm going to eat and look at the books and all. So I did get some more skims because I really like their stuff. So one thing, okay, yeah. I thought this was a two piece, but they only I only got the leggings, so I'm gonna have to buy this top for that, but I'll show y'all what I got. So this two-piece set I saw in a video, and I'm like, this reminds me of the stuff I'd want to dance, like, <laughs> these are bicycle shorts. One, they look like they're for children, because they're so small. What size did I get? Extra small. I was just doing yard work, so ignore that. But these look so see-through. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to wear that. Like on the bottom when it's see-through, that's like a whole different thing than your top being see-through, in my opinion. So let's see this one now. Then here's the top. Let's see. It doesn't look as see-through. And again, as I said, I would... Tops, it's like more alright than bottoms. I know, it's just taboo things and I got a triple X in that I don't know why then I got leggings and I got an extra small on these yeah I definitely prefer their cotton material yeah I'm gonna have to get the shirt to go that goes with these because I I thought what I clicked would buy both but it's only the leggings so yeah I saw both of these in a video so I went with the sizes that were matched my measurements but again like the shirt looked fine these just look really small and as I said they look really see-through and I don't know how I feel about that but maybe I'm thinking of if I ever get back to Florida and Miami which I did look but prices were just crazy Florida was really feeling it I guess but maybe like put these over a bikini or whatever kind of bathing suit you want to wear I have been loving one pieces in recent years so maybe put this over a bathing suit I think that could be even cool because then it's like a bodysuit with these yeah I'm actually really liking that idea I might do that and then leggings obviously wear these all the time but I do want to get the matching um I think I'm gonna get the tank top. They have multiple things that you can match it with, but I think I'm just gonna go with the tank top because I like tank tops and it is summer or almost spring starts tomorrow. But yeah, and on the front of the package, let me show y'all if I can get the lid down. It said, well, I'm not gonna, it just said time sensitive on it. And I'm like, so I was like, what is in there then? I'm like, does somebody buy me like food or something? <laughs> or garden seeds because I do I bought some seeds online and I was like is that what it was and I literally opened it and I was like oh it's closed all right so then I got a thing from Joanne's Fabrics which we do have that store in my town but I this is very busy week so, oh. so yeah I thought this was more of a fleecy material like this kind of material 
but it's not. So I want this print, but yeah, you, this I can use for a ton of things. I use fabric, stuff like this for a lot of things. Oh my gosh, it looks like they actually like hand cut it. I'm like, I'm, like did they? Because that's kind of amazing. So we got that. Now we have our unplugged book box. They did ship a little late this month, but obviously in the towns we live in, it's completely understandable. So, oh yeah, there's the front. So I'm going to open this. Okay, here we go, live reaction. Every time I open these, I do the live reaction. Ooh, we have something big. So Spellbound is the theme this month. I get the adult fiction box. We're not gonna look in here yet because we don't want spoilers. So April's theme is be bold be you exactly no, is this going to be fantasy or sci-fi i didn't know they showed the genre like that so this is some kind of blanket or tapestry i'm not going to open it right now just because i don't have a lot of i only have one hand on this side so ooh, what is this a lotion bar i've never had a lotion bar so dark wood Robinson Family Soaps. Definitely check them out. I love the bath things they include in these boxes. In these boxes, it is, I can use everything. I use everything I've ever gotten in. So this is a thermostatic cup warmer. I've never, I didn't even really know they were a thing. Okay, there's the wire. Okay, it's just a cup warmer in general. That's kind of unique. I wonder if it's going to have to do with anything in here. They only send a candle, love candles. So this is the Owen Sisters. Is that practical magic? I don't remember. Black cherry. That's my all-time favorite. <laughs> Musk and warm vanilla. Love all of that. So who did this? Lichen and Limestone, maybe? Is that the company? Oh, Unplugged Exclusive Candle. Yeah, love candles. So here's the book. Oh, oh no, there's more. This looks like a bath bomb. One last soap, so soap bath bomb, I don't know, but a little um, cupcake. Cute. Again, you can obviously use soap. So this is the book. I might have to put the camera down to open it. Oh. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna put the camera down and then um get back to y'all once I get this filled off. All right, so let's slide it on out. Oh gosh, I'm trying to do that. Well, we can... Not a, not the witch you wed. I had seen this on Goodreads, so a magic never made love any easier. And this is by April Asher. Magicless witch Violet Maxwell wants nothing to do with the alpha wolf shifter Lincoln Thorne, the man who broke her fragile teenage heart. Ooh, second chance romance, maybe? Oh, and the two of them are forced by arcane supernatural laws to find mates. Oh my gosh, finding mates. <laughs> Violet and Lincoln agree to fake date their way to a fake mating in order <laughs> to conserve themselves some dog. That sounds interesting. I have not read anything like that. So it seems like this is a romance. Well done. But that is interesting. And they look cute. I always think that romance stories are so cute. I'm like, the people, look at them. Look at them. Okay, I put that in there so the box won't tip over. So I don't know why we have a performer. It's interesting. Ooh, look at that. That's so pretty. Um, so ooh, this is from the author. So I'll let y'all pause and read that. I'll read it in depth when I'm not on camera. And then we have their autograph. Thank you, April. Nice signature. I love the A's. <laughs> That's cool. It hurt. It's like they start with the same letter, like her first and last name. So yeah, let's see what that one big thing was. Spoiler card. Ooh, I don't drink alcohol though, but um, a candle. Yeah, practical magic. You're the witching lotion bar. Mug warmer. And then a library scene blanket or sheet. Never go wrong with blankets, right? So that 
We have a lot of metal. It is Sunday. I don't know why I'm talking so quietly. I'm gonna be wearing this outfit again in the vlog because I wanted to try it on today to make sure it fit, basically. That's what I do with my outfits. So, especially when they're for a trip. This isn't for a trip, but like, if it's for a trip, I will wear the outfits like weeks previous to make sure they fit. So when I'm on the road, I'm not like, I have nothing because that before the pandemic in 2020, like I went to Phoenix. So I drove across America, pants didn't fit, had to go to Target in Phoenix to buy a belt. So yeah, so now I better prepare myself. So I didn't talk about what books I'm reading yesterday. So I do want to tell y'all now. So I am reading Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I read 98 pages of this yesterday. I know I was so close to 100, but just to get to 100. So I'm exactly at 50%. It doesn't look like it. It looks over it, right? That's how much I've read. It looks over 50 to me, but that's what it said. So I'm on page 187. Yeah, as you can see, each page doesn't have the numbers, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, I don't like the way this is formatted, but that's on the editors and publishers. That's not on the story itself. The story itself, I feel like this is just very long winded. It's only a little over 300, but like the metaphors and it just takes forever to get to the point and I'm not liking that. But I mean, for the time period and all, I am liking that. And then I like the plot of it being about Shakespeare's wife. It never explicitly says Shakespeare, but I mean, it's like he writes, the husband writes a play called Hamlet. I think y'all all know who wrote Hamlet, to be or not to be is the question. No, I read the whole quote earlier. so. This is my mood read, so I am going to finish it. I hope to finish it today, but I think it'll be more likely if I finish tomorrow, because if I really am at 50%, I don't think I can read that all in one day. And at first, the first like 25%, um, or first 23% was very like long widened, like 25 page chapters. Um, now the chapters are um, like at a, about 20, or not 20, about 12 pages long, so not bad at all. Then I'm still reading Fall of Giants by Ken Follett. I am at 80%, maybe a little over 80, like 82% of the way through this. So I'm, I read a chapter a day on the ebook and we're just getting so much Russian revolution back to back to back and I'm getting bored with that. I'm like, what are the British characters doing? What are the Americans doing? Or then we have some characters who are like Russian, but live in Buffalo, New York. And I'm like, what are they doing? I'm getting tired of the Russian Revolution. Gregor Gregory, I'm not sure how you pronounce that name. I know it's a very common name, but um, yeah, his chapters are just boring me. And so that's my only complaint. I still think this is gonna be a five star, but yeah. So, and I read 16 pages of that yesterday. So I read a total of 114 pages yesterday. So I'm going to eat some lunch. I know every clip I'm always like, I'm about to go eat but I am. So, and then I will pick this up. I do want to do um, some things on the computer. Um, I've started researching the House of Savoy, which um, we talked about um, Medici yesterday. And um, was it Galeazzo or Francisco? I think it was Galeazzo, who was the um, Duke of Milan and his wife was Bona of Savoy. And if you don't know, interesting tidbit is she is the woman that Edward IV was supposed to marry, but he married Elizabeth Woodville instead. He married for love. And so Bona ended up marrying Galeazzo Sforza. And this, I think that's very fascinating. I didn't realize it until I got a book on the War of the Roses and I was reading it and it's like a big like table, coffee table book. And I was like, oh my gosh, I never knew that. So um, I've just kind of been reading about the House of Savoy, learning about them. There's a lot I didn't know. Um, so I want to um, look into some of that still, but and I'm gonna do that while I eat because I've been eating at my desk, which is covered in trash, but I'll clean it tomorrow. <laughs> Done reading this for the day. So yeah, did not finish. I have that much more. I read 71 pages. I was just super like sleepy. So I didn't feel like reading that much. And as I said, that's a very long winded one. The way it's dealing with grief is amazing they're like that might push it up to like a 3.5 i'm still gonna unhaul the book but it's like the writing just the how i feel like it's trying too hard in the metaphors that just really puts it down for me and yeah so i read 71 pages so we will be picking this one up now this is a 
I really need to watch last week's episode of Winning Time because the third episode is airing right now and I still haven't watched the second. But I'm like, I'm tired and I want to write. Like, I want to write, but I'm like, I'm tired and I feel like I can't put my full effort into it. But who knows what Today has been low-key stressful. It's Monday. You know, very Monday Mondays. So... I did read. I read yesterday too. I don't know if I updated after I read, but I've read 20 pages of the overstory um, so far. So let's just go into the order of things. So obviously I did all my makeup and all of that. For some reason my nose looked really big in the pictures I took today, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So first, I'm like that plane is really close. I have to see what it is. Is it the forest service again? No, because the forest service flew over earlier and they were like at 500 feet. I was like, oh. So, um, I had to pick up Tom today, his cremated, like, the urn or whatever. Um, I had to pick that up at four. So I was like, there is no way at all I'm going to be ready by four. Because I had to do all this. I had to film a video, and this is probably my longest sit-down video this year because it's my book haul. And y'all know, I've bought a ton of books this month, then. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, so I just felt very stressed through that, um, even though I had until five, but still I was like, <laughs> yeah, I got, I got them though, and I got done everything I needed again, so I recorded my video, and then my, so I charged my battery before I filmed, like, the, while I was doing my makeup, so that took about, um, 40 minutes, and then, um, so I film about 20 minutes of my video and then my battery dies. So I have to film the rest of my phone. I have no idea how that's gonna be, the quality or anything. We can just have fingers crossed that's gonna be well. And then, so I did all that. Then I went outside to take um, a picture of myself with the camera aiming downwards. So let me show y'all. I took two. For some, so obviously there's that annoying thing of the shadow because I was in like the direct sun. But my nose just looks huge and I just don't look like me. Like, I don't know, that doesn't look like me. I think the hair, when I wear hats, I've learned that I should pin back my bangs because they just, I don't know, I don't like the way it looks. And then, I don't know, the way my eyeliner and eyelashes look, it looks like my eyes are downturned. And then my nose just looks ginormous. I don't know why it looks like that. I know my lips are big because I have um, plumping and I overline my lips. My lips look great, love the way they look, but the eyes, like especially this one, I don't know, I suck at eyeliner. It literally the most difficult thing. I hate it, but I'm like, I feel like I need it. <laughs> and then my eyebrows, I know this one went a little down, so I think that's why. So yeah, I think the pictures turn out ugly and I don't think I'm gonna post them. I did take some in the car after though, when I was at Chick-fil-A, because Chick-fil-A, literally, people in my town are like, this Chick-fil-A is the best customer service ever. No, it's this, because you think the people there are like, like back then, they had crushes on people. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, and um, yeah, but no, the Chick-fil-A, they're terrible. Like the food is good, but the line, I shouldn't have to send line 30 minutes. No. So, yeah, I took some pictures in the car, like this one. I don't know. I don't know if that's Instagram worthy or not. Yeah, I'm just not sure. And then that's what the Instagram filter looks very cute. But yeah, so I got Tom back. That's my little setup there. So I'm going to change into comfy clothes, even though this is really, really comfortable. And yeah, I have to wake up at 8 o'clock tomorrow. 8 30 and that has me stressed to the max like i thought it was going to be more towards nine so you know fun time for our nine o'clock update i will admit i feel a lot better now um because i don't know i just felt overwhelmed earlier so um i did read i read 59 pages in here today that's my thing now because these chapters at this point in the story are like 200 pages long and obviously I could read that in a day, but this is a book that is that I would want to take my time with. So I'm just reading 60 pages a day. I have the rest of the month to finish it because this is the last book on my March TBR. So I'm not overly concerned about um, having to finish it in a certain amount of time because I have like two weeks basically to read it. So I'm just going to be reading 60 pages a day. 
um, right now are stories. So the first section, Roots, those we had nine separate um, characters really, or um, nine separate stories. And now in, is it Trunk? That seems like what would come next in a tree, but let me confirm. We start with the Roots. And I found out why I love these pages. Yeah, Trunk is next, but they are um, printed on 100% recycled pages. So I like the sound of the pages, the fill of the pages. I just really like that. So it'd be really nice if more books were made with recycled paper. So yes, I was marking each one that I like, but I guess I kind of forgot about that. But um, yeah, so we have several different stories here, nine different stories. Sorry. And then in Trunk, they are all getting connected. So I think so far I've had three or four so far connect. I really like Olivia and what's his name? Jack or Nick? I think it was Nick. Yeah, Nick and Olivia. I'm really liking that um, story right now, which I really like Nick's. Um, it's his ancestors and his like grandfather and the first story that's about his family, which I think is the first story in the whole book. That was my favorite one of those. And um, so now we're just seeing all those stories connect. I'm glad that they're connecting because sometimes I've read books where it's been like that and then these people's lives never connect and I'm like, what was the point? So they're all getting connected right now. And as you can see, I am annotating a lot. Now, this was a five star prediction for me at this point at 40%. I don't think it's going to be a five star. I think it's going to be like a four. Anxious People was another five star prediction that I've read in this project and I gave that a 4.5. So technically in Goodreads that does round up to a five, but just I'm not think I'm not feeling a five star for this. I don't really have a lot wrong with it, but it's not five star. It's not hitting it for me. So I read 59 pages in that. So we are going to get to Hamnet now. I am on page 258. Um, will I finish this today? I'm going to say most likely not because I have to get my shower in about 25 minutes. So I'm just going to read for the next 25 minutes. Again, this is a three star. Um, I, it falls into the overhyped category for me, which I hate to admit because I know a lot of people I have similar reading tastes with really enjoyed this. So I, yeah, I'm just not, the writing isn't for me. Um, I really like the plot and I, yeah, I like basically everything else, just the writing, not for me. Fresh morning face. Back on the vitamin C serum. Love that stuff. So here's my look. Kind of cute, kind of. 8 a.m. I'm never up this early, so I feel like death itself. Not really. <laughs> yeah, I sort of over a dress and then I have on some skims. Biker shorts, they do fit. They fit perfectly. And then my little bag. It's a look.
but it's Tuesday. I am home. It's 2.49. I stopped and got some pizza on the way at an Italian place that I have not been to. So yeah, I went to the beach to um, get my grandma's house ready for the like season or whatever. Um, to see what needed repairs and that kind of thing. And I got a lot of books for free though because they were her books that she had already read and it was like take what you want so and I got um a, I got a sweater <laughs> some decor um pictures Fred's right here <laughs> and um I got some magazines from the 90s that is just some funny headlines and all of that but I'm going to change this outfit was really cute having the dress with the um, sweater but I'm gonna get into some comfy clothes and I am going to read soon. And yeah. So I did want to show you guys the progress with my garden. So these are beans. These my dog threw dirt on them. So um they did grow through the dirt overnight. And then we had this one. He was the first one. And oh see, see. Get out the garden. Get out. I have to water it. Nope. No. <laughs> Okay, and then I have carrots planted over here, so I'm not sure if any of these are um, from the carrots, so if y'all know, let me know, but I'm out here watering. Things grow with love. Yep. Update. So I did end up filming an ASMR video. I don't know how exactly it turned out, because I usually don't film on Tuesdays, but I just wanted to get that done. Um, because I just had the props sitting around that I was like, I just want to get to it. So I, then I added all the books that I've hauled into, or hauled, you know, this month into my, um, bullet journal. And I sorted through the books that I got today. I got several and there are so many that are in the middle of the series. Like, I think a lot of them aren't like a continuous thing that you can read them as standalones. But for me, I, I can't do that. I have to read the whole thing. And some I knew, like the North South book. Let me know if it's controversial, because I don't know. I got the last book, um, but that is a time period that I want to read about. So I don't, and I want to read about it from both sides of the Civil War. Um, but I just haven't read anything set during then. So I did read 65 pages in the over story. So I read as much as, ooh, I need to put um, what page I want to get to tomorrow. But I got to page 269. I think I put 268 on the Goodreads, but I'm over halfway now and I have about four hours left on the audiobook, I think. So I'm not gonna finish this tomorrow, but I will have this finished by the end of the week, which is my goal. So then I'm going to get into Hamnet now. Might finish this, but I don't know. I'm usually reading about 20 pages in a sitting, so it is doable maybe to finish it tonight, but I'm not sure. So I need to do the math to find out um, where I am in here. But yeah, the reason why this isn't a five star is I think this could have been a lot shorter. I just find myself growing bored at parts, and that's my only complaint is I think this could have been a whole lot shorter. I finished Hamnet, so if you guys would like my full and final thoughts, be sure to check out my bookstagram. I'll leave it linked down below in the pinned comment. Alright, so I did want to show y'all some of these stuff I got yesterday. So. I got this mug that's Cozumel. Never been there, just thought it was cool. Stealing mugs, you know, I didn't steal this stuff, but. Um, I got this sweater. I just like the color of it. And it was in my size, which is awesome. <laughs> so this is yellow. I think that's nice for spring. Um, this is a calendar. That is like family photos. Then, when I have my mid-century house one day, I want a lot of owls. So I got this, you hang it on the wall up there as you can see. There's all that. And 
in this sign, he who hoots with owls at night cannot soar with eagles in the morning. And that is me. I went to bed before midnight though last night. So this was this already in this box. I just got this box. It's a bush beer box. Um, there's the side. Because I wanted these vintage magazines. It's literally like National Enquirer, Star, um, Soap Opera. I don't know about soap operas. Um... Yeah, I just think they're funny. <laughs> I'm like this one. Like that. It's from 91. So I thought it'd be funny to look at those. And let's see. I don't know what that is. It came off with something. Something Disney from the 70s. Then these little... Yeah, this stuff was all just in the box already. Little decorative um stones and then like kind of a fourth of july thing it's more plastic i don't know <laughs> and sand because this all came from the beach but yeah so this is what i got that weren't these were the things that were not books yeah that's the proper way to say that so that's what i got Wednesday. I'm not in my usual Wednesday vlogging spot. That's awkward. <laughs> but I'm about to get back to reading. Yeah, last night I went to bed before midnight, which is something I never do. I was in the middle of reading Fall of Giants and I was just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I'll sleep for two hours and then pick up the book when I wake up. That's what I did. <laughs> I slept like three hours though. So I, um, I read the majority of the chapter and then I went to sleep, woke up at like 2.52 and read then, got some cookie dough <laughs> for a little snack because I was very hungry. And then I was so hungry when I woke up today. I like, you know, when you're nauseous because you're so hungry because I slept for so long, so I didn't eat like, because I usually get a midnight snack. And so obviously I didn't, cookie dough is not really sustainable. So I was nauseous because I was hungry. And then I was like, I don't want to eat because I'm nauseous. But took some Tums, had some pizza for lunch. The pizza didn't taste as good um, being reheated. It tastes like the tomatoes or something. I don't know. I still ate it, but <laughs> it wasn't as good as um, when I first got it. But I guess that's all pizza, right? Um, or all food that you heated up leftovers, you know? So... We will go to Target later. Oh yeah, I need to see what the new releases are today. If there are any, it would have been yesterday, but as y'all saw yesterday, I was super busy. So today, it would be the 22nd when they released. Yeah, there are none. No releases that I'm excited for this week. So that's good for my bank account. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of books yesterday um, from my grandma's house. This books that she didn't want anymore. I ransacked the house in every room. Some of those books are like one is ninth in a series and that stresses me out. So like I'll just get ebooks for the um earlier books in the series. But yeah, um my throat was so messed up yesterday because all the dust. I should have had my mask on. I had a mask with me, but obviously just being in the house I didn't think. But the dust was so bad. Um but I'm all good now, obviously. So yeah, we're going to go to Target in about 45 minutes, a little less, but I'm going to read between then before we're going. And um, so it looks like we're just vlogging in here today. So <laughs> maybe I'll switch to doing the bathroom tomorrow, which I seem to clean my bathroom still. I am a day behind, but um, yeah, hopefully I'll get to that. So yeah, I went to Target and I totally forgot to show what I got. I got a little Easter egg that you will see in the background of my sit down videos. And then I got, let's do this here. Knocking stuff down, you know. Can y'all see that? I got that face. It was in the dollar section. So that's always a good deal to get something very cheap. Yeah, there was no one around the dollar section today. So I thought to go to it. And usually there'll be like a ton of people around it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get in that crowd. But. I got this cute little base. I read 61 pages just then, so I should finish this book on Monday if I did my math correctly, but we know I'm not good at math. So since we finished Hamnet, I am starting, 
a historical fiction. This will probably be my last one of the month, my last mood read. Maybe, I don't know, because we have eight days left of the month. I think it's eight days, and maybe seven. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, we have eight days currently, so it just really depends how long it takes me to get through this. So this is News of the World by Paulette Jowles. I thought of picking up, um, is it called Chorus or Choir by Rebecca Kaufman, but I'm like, I may get confused with Fall of Giants since they're both the early, um, what is that, 20th century, so I, just, I didn't want to, um, get confused. So I went with a Western. I've literally had this book forever. I think I got it in Vlogmas a few years ago. So this book is barely 200 pages. So yeah, 209 pages, super short. And a Netflix movie with Tom Hanks came out. Um, I think it's Netflix, but Tom Hanks came out in 2020, which I thought it was a whole lot more recently, but it wasn't. So this is Captain Jefferson Cowkid drifts through Northern Texas performing live readings from newspapers to paying audiences hungry for news of the world, of the Irish pouring into New York City or the railroad driving into the new state of Nebraska. An elderly widower who has lived through three wars and fought in two of them, the captain once made his living as a printer until the war between the states took his press and everything with it. Now at 71, he enjoys freedom at the road. And yeah, it goes on. There's something, a girl, like a kid who he picks up and helps her get home or something. I don't know. Well, I'll keep reading it. No, because my battery is dying. But yeah, this is what I'm starting next. So I got to page 19. There's a lack of quotation marks here. And I'm just curious why some authors choose to do that. So if you know, let me know. It's Thursday, so I thought I would just do my skincare routine on camera, because why not? So again, this is the best thing that I've ever used on my skin, the True Skin Vitamin C Facial Serum, Vitamin E plus hy Hydrochloric Acid. This works miracles. I got it at Target. The first time I had it, I had done it at um, Amazon, but I saw it at Target and I was like, Need that in my life. So I'm not gua sha -ing. I will do the roller on my face. I do the roller in the morning and then gua sha at night. And I do gua sha every other day. Um, this is what works best for me and for my skin. So one of these lights is flickering to like, oh no, I need to change up the light bulbs. And I have a band-aid because when I was cutting my nails, I cut it too close or whatever. So my pinky, yeah, I didn't notice it when I did it. And then I go, I leave the bathroom, go to my desk and I was like, oh my gosh, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> so that's what happened. But I put some rubbing alcohol on it and all of that. And I had to deep clean my plant, one of my plants today, it's my oldest one. Diego is the name. Um, he had mealybugs, I guess that's how you say it. I didn't know what those were because I am not a pro with plants. I just water them every other day and we're good. So um, he had white stuff on him. and But the plant itself looked healthy. So I didn't really think anything of it. But I was like, I'm going to ask for it because what is this stuff and people are saying it's the worst infestation or whatever they had ever seen it's like oh my gosh i feel really guilty these people probably think i don't know how to take care of things so people suggested a lot of people said just to burn the plant that it's not worth saving and then some people said yeah try to save it i'm trying to save it i have saved plants before from other um parasites and whatnot so i have saved plants in the past and that's not new to me and um, so i'm gonna try to save him so um they said to put rubbing alcohol on cotton swabs or q-tips whatever you want to use so i used cotton swabs just because that's what i had more of 
Um, and this is not coming out, my moisturizer. <laughs> oh, there we go, a lot of it. So I used the cotton, put alcohol on the cotton swabs, rubbing alcohol, I don't know if I said that, and did that. And took all the stuff off and it actually does look good without it. So it didn't do a ton of damage to the plant itself. The plant still looks relatively healthy. I did break off some stems that were dead, but for the most part, it does look really healthy. So now um, I'm just going to repot it and um, change the soil. And again, they said you can um, put the rubbing alcohol in the soil and all, but I just, I didn't know how much to do for that. Um, so I didn't, I'm just gonna change out the soil and then that pot I was using, I'm just gonna throw it out. People said to like wash it with hot water and all, but I'm like, no, I have flower pots sitting around. I'm just gonna throw it out. And um, yeah, so I'm going to repot him later today, probably in about an hour. He's outside quarantining right now. And yeah, I checked on my other plants and all my other plants were good. So that is like super strange that only one um, had this disease or whatever. Because they're literally only like three inches apart. They're not far apart at all. But only this one was infected or whatever. I don't know why, but <laughs> that's how it is. So this is the company I use for my gua shine mo values so i'm just going to use the roller right now which is this i think this is rose quartz that it's made from but yeah i don't really do in-depth right now at this for the morning i don't do anything too crazy um when i do it at night it takes about 10 minutes but right now i'm not doing um a lot But yeah, gua shine and just using like facial serum and moisturizing multiple times a day has helped my skin tremendously. And I think it is probably my best feature on my face. So I'm not looking at y'all, I'm looking in the mirror behind you. But yeah, the vitamin C especially helped me a ton. Yeah, uh, and recently I haven't had a lot of vitamin C. The drinks that I get, the juice, like fruit juices, um, have been sold out. I don't know, there's shortage again. There was a shortage back in winter of like cranberry juice and all cranberry juice is my favorite. And I just could not find any a Target. Yeah, even fruit punch, like the healthy fruit punch was sold out everything. So there was like no juices at all. So I'm um, just gonna be drinking water. So, but yeah, I haven't had a lot of vitamin C in a few months now, so at least I can put it on topically. Oh, I did it the wrong way, they're supposed to go up. And this drains your face, your lymph nodes over here. And doing this has helped with um, swelling. Oh, what's the word? It starts with a P. Puffiness. It has helped a lot um, doing it through here. I saw it in a, the girl was in a K-pop group. I don't know what group or anything, because I watch a lot of those on Vogue where it's, um, celebrities doing their skincare routine or doing their makeup and I just I like seeing people do that and those videos are usually short so yeah, I'm not wasting a lot of time or anything yeah I'm not doing fresh shampoo on my hair today I will be washing my hair well conditioning my hair tonight I wash my hair on Sundays with shampoo and I was using a, um, one for um, blonde hair um, when my hair was really blonde back in the summer well, I like strawberry blonde hair, but um, in winter, I like to keep my hair darker, even though we are in spring now, so I probably will get back to bleaching my hair, which it's over there. Um, so I do use purple shampoo in that time, but in winter, I'm just using a um, Pantene, I think is who it's by, but I use a sulfate-free because I would get really bad like sub septum plugs on my head, mainly on the back and my scalp would just get really irritated having sulfate in it. So now I do sulfate free and I think I'm gonna switch to a sulfate free mouthwash and all because sulfate can cause um, gum swelling. And if you don't know, I've dealt with gum swelling practically my whole adult life, teenage years, everything. 
I went to the dentist for it and they didn't even know. They were like, nothing seems wrong here. Your gums are just swollen. So he, um, here's a um, mouthwash you should use. It starts with a P and I do use that when um, my gums do get swollen. So I'm going to maybe switch to sulfate free. Right now my gums aren't swollen, but sometimes they do. Um, so I probably will switch to a sulfate free. I think that's just something that sulfate irritates my body. So I want to get rid of that. And I had some friends recommend me some for people who have had similar things with their gums. And then one did recommend hair and I was like, I'm good with that. But yeah, so I wash my hair on Sundays. Tuesday, I don't do anything. Or Tuesday I put in, let me show you this. And then um, Thursdays, I just condition my hair in the shower. I don't shampoo. And there's my morning routine. You know, casually eat an ice cream in my bathroom. My bicep is hurting. Bicep, I put like a T, is there a T? No, I don't think so. This is cramping up. This happens every now and then. And I know it's from my posture. And I haven't worked out in two weeks, exactly two weeks. There goes the lights, which is really bad. I just have been very busy. Today I could have, but I just didn't. Um, Cause I felt weird starting working out on a Thursday when I haven't worked out the rest of the week. So I definitely need to get back to working out next week. But yeah, so right here. Yeah, <laughs> so I was icing it. I can't wait to get in the shower. I know from holding books probably causes it. And then I've been sitting at my desk um, when I do my audiobook because I'm usually doing stuff on the computer at the same time. And I know I lean towards my left. So that puts us a lot of pressure in that area. So I need to correct and stand up straight. Um, but yeah, it's super annoying. And yeah, I just, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, but yeah, since I seen it, I do feel a lot better than I did earlier. But yeah, I just started randomly at six in the six o'clock hour when I was reading. So yeah, I did read the over story today. I read 58 pages. Yeah, this book is just way too long. It could have been a five star. It was not so lengthy, but it's just going to be a four star because it's just taking forever to get through. We had a character die and like, I didn't even care because I'm like, it's been going on forever. I don't care anymore. So that, so I am at 77% um, and I'm on track to finish that on Monday. May try to get it all in tomorrow. I don't know. It's a very dense book. It's not hard topics, but it's just, as I said, it's very long, very descriptive. And I feel like you really need to be paying attention. So maybe the audiobook isn't the route to go, but, um, I still have got a lot out of it because I follow along while I read and that's what I try to do. Um, so that's that. So I'm going to read more of News of the World at 9 which is in a little over 20 minutes. That the guy has accepted to um, take this girl back down to San Antonio from like where are we the Oklahoma border which I don't think it was called Oklahoma back then but you know. So taking her all the way like across Texas and um, he's agreed to do that, go on that mission. And then in Fall of Giants, I am at, and in um, News of the World, I'm at 9%. I read about 19 pages. So in Fall of Giants, I'm 86% through. So I should be finishing this one up soon. And in that one, World War I just ended. So I'm like, I have no idea where the rest of this series will go. It is called the Century Trilogy. So I don't know if it's gonna go through the whole 20th century or what. Um, I can assume the second book's gonna be about World War II, but you never know. We could just get Roaring Twenties or the Great Depression for our like American characters. I don't know where it's gonna go, but I love how Ken Follett follows like one family through multiple generations because that's something I personally do with my own writing and it's just one of my favorite tropes. So we'll be getting to those later and I feel like I need to like shake this out and feel stiff because yeah, with my wrist, I'm like, because I had my arm like out like that just to let it, the ice be on it. I didn't use ice, I just used a cold rag, but <laughs> so it feels kind of stiff. But um, 
yeah, so those are my reading updates and I will update y'all after my nine o'clock reading hour. I'm talking very quiet because I know there's an echo in here, so I don't want to be like bombarding your ears, but I'm just gonna eat my ice cream and scroll through Twitter about reading other people who have had bicep cramps. It's time to end the night. So I ended up reading 31 pages on here. I'm still not like feeling nothing at all. I'm 23% of the way in and I'm just bored. Like, okay, you're on this journey, taking this girl back to San Antonio. People stop you every now and then. Like, yeah, so I don't know. It, it has a ton of praise and it's a National Book Award finalist, but I'm not really feeling anything to it. Um, but yeah, so that was 31 pages. So I've read 90 some pages today, so I'm on track to read more than I read yesterday, which is always a positive. And yeah, I said I got to 23%. And then in Fall of Giants, I'll be starting on page 750 of the ebook today and reading one chapter. I don't know how long the chapter is. It's the first part or the first chapter in part three, if I'm correct. So let me confirm this for you guys. Yeah, part three, the world made new. So, and by that, I'm on the Kindle app, it says I'm 87%, on Goodreads, it says I'm 86%. So, who knows? But yeah, so I'm going to end the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell if you would like to be notified when all my videos go live. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.